We have big news in Toronto. The Maple Leafs are adding Shane Doan to their executive staff. We'll discuss the move and his role coming up next. So welcome back to another video here, Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some pretty significant news into the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. We have an official announcement now that Shane Doan is joining their front office. Of course, the news first kind of broke last night from Kevin Weeks, who posted on Twitter indicating that he had word that Shane Doan would be joining the Maple Leafs front office uh, as an assistant to Brad Tree Living, and uh, he turned out to be accurate. Now, the Maple Leafs just put out the formal announcement just a short time ago. Uh, of course, Shane Doan has been uh, retired now for about six years, retired back in 2017, longtime player, played his entire career, of course, with the Jets slash Coyotes uh, organization franchise. Um, he's been a, a big supporter of the Coyotes. Uh, statement actually was just put out as well from Coyotes current owner Alex Barillo uh, saying that Doan had approached the Coyotes uh, but wanted to have a, a larger role within the hockey operations department and to kind of expand his career and not respect, and they fully supported his uh, decision to uh, to move to the Maple Leafs organization to pursue that. They said, obviously, he's been a huge uh, support for himself personally, uh, as well as the community and all he's done. Now, it's fair to say nobody's been a bigger uh, supporter over all the entire duration here of that franchise than Shane Doan. He's uh, not only been uh, you know a key player, but a, you know a key person that's really been putting uh, boots to the ground and trying to get the, the you know all the support he can to help the franchise stay and thrive in Arizona, which is what I think he would like to see long-term. Of course, his son uh, was recently drafted uh, to by the Coyotes and just uh, signed out of college this past uh, recently or offseason. So, like, you know, certainly Don has a lot of ties to the Coyotes. I'm honestly a bit surprised here that they didn't give him a bigger role within their organization and try to keep him. But obviously, he does have a prior relationship here with Brad Tree Living. Of course, Shane Doan, uh, like I said, long time associated with the Coyotes, and Brad Tree Living was uh, an assistant general manager there for an extended time before he got the GM role with the Calgary Flames. Uh, so Shane Doan is going to be uh, a special advisor to uh, to Brad Tree Living as the GM. So he's not technically an AGM and a special advisor to the GM, but as uh, the announcement says, that he will basically assist with all aspects of hockey operations. So he'll be doing. A variety of things. Now, uh, this is important in a couple of ways. Obviously, we know Brad Tree Living and being the new GM in Toronto is going to want to bring in some of his own people. Obviously, he's got the, you know the previous relationship there with Doan, so this is you know important in that regard. Not surprising at all. Everybody seems to do this. At the same time, you're not really shaking up too much of what's there. Obviously, they already have a pretty good staff in place for the AGMs and other uh, parts of the management team, so you can kind of leave that in place. We haven't heard anything yet that. Anybody's going to be let go or shuffled out or anything of that nature. So uh, it kind of adds you know, a, a nice voice to the mix without uh, really taking anything away. Obviously, you know, you could say maybe Jason Spezza kind of played a similar role with Kyle Dewis, um, except I would imagine Shane Nolan's role is probably going to be a little bit more expansive because Spezza was more recently retired, didn't have as much experience where Shane Doan has already had a chance to, to work. Uh, is as an executive, not to this level, mind you, but obviously done some stuff with the Coyotes already, and he's also had a chance to work as uh, uh, internationally with Team Canada. Uh, he's been a GM for uh, different international tournaments and things like that, so he's he's got a lot of really relevant experience in the past, you know, four or five years. He's also part owner of the Western Hockey League's Kamloops Blazers. Uh, Tom Gagliardi, who's the majority owner of the Blazers, also majority owner of the Dallas Stars, uh, but. Uh, uh, known along with a fellow few other uh, former Blazers and uh, friends of his from the hockey world, including Jerome McGinley, uh, Mark Recchi, and Daryl Sador are all part owners of the Blazers, who just recently hosted, of course, this year's Memorial Cup. So, obviously, Shane Doan, uh, like I said, looking to get a, a bigger role. He's also the you know hero, I guess you could say, or the, the player that Austin Matthews really uh, looked up to growing up. And he probably, I can't say for certain, but I would think uh, Matthew Nines probably had a big appreciation for Doan, too, because, of course, uh, you know, they both grew up in the Arizona area. You know, they're, they're um, you know, products of the Coyotes being down in that market and expanding the reach of hockey uh, down in Arizona. So, obviously, you know, we know that Tree Living is new to the Maple Leafs. He doesn't know Matthews personally. He's just starting to get that process. Matthews has been kind of growing up in the Leafs organization with Kyle Dubas. He trusted Kyle Dubas. 
Uh, I don't think there's any danger of Austin Matthews leaving the Maple Leafs here. Uh, he said all the right things that he wants to sign and stay. The only thing is that Matthews does not appear to want to sign long term. I honestly don't necessarily think that's anything to do with the team specifically. I think Matthews is looking at this more from a financial standpoint on how he can maximize his career earnings. So I think we're going to see Matthews take another shorter deal, uh, maybe three, four, no more than five years at most. And then his next deal after that will be the eight-year deal that gets him to near the end of his career and he can maximize his earnings that way as the cap continues to rise and hopefully his performance lives up to it so he can continue to make more and more money. But having a new a voice in, in the organization that Matthews knows and obviously grew up idolizing, certainly not going to hurt matters from keeping their star player happy and keeping him trusting the vision of the franchise moving forward. Like, you know, if he, um, you know, like I said, the relationship with Trey Living is new, he can always talk to Doan too and kind of get reassurance if he needs it. I don't know if he does or not. It just certainly doesn't hurt. And I don't know if this is a play to make Matthews happy. I think this is more of a play for Brad Tree Living to, uh, expand who he wants in the organization. It's an opportunity for Doan to expand what he wants to do in hockey. It just has a really nice side effect, I think, of having the uh, you know potential resource there to help a guy like Matthews or even Nice too. But obviously, Matthews is the bigger priority here when it comes to uh, kind of maintaining that very healthy relationship and making sure he stays in Toronto as long as possible. So let me know your thoughts on Shane Doan joining the Toronto Maple Leafs. This seems like a really good addition. He's a really Smart, well-respected hockey man. Uh, been in the uh, you know in the league in a long time, except by a variety of roles from player to what he's done off the ice with Team Canada, with the Coyotes, and now with the Maple Leafs. I think this is a, a tremendous asset to add for the Maple Leafs organization. Let me know what you think in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.